Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday morning prayer and devotion on this last day of January of 2024. Janie Hart was very alert and responsive yesterday. Uh, they plan to take her to the OR this morning to look for any obstruction that might be blocking her airway in hopes of successfully taking her off the vent. Um, she is no longer contagious from the COVID, and we thank God for that good report this morning. Uh, Sister Terry Wilmer was taken into surgery yesterday afternoon to remove blood clots from both lungs. Uh, in fact, we were uh, on our way to uh, visit her in the hospital and got the call from Kay uh, that they had planned to do the surgery in the morning, uh, this morning, to remove the uh, pulmonary embolism. She had double pulmonary embolisms, and um, they were going to do the surgery today, and instead they took her in uh, late yesterday afternoon. So we're praying now for a quick and full recovery for Terry. Also praying for Marsha's co-worker who's having hip replacement surgery today. Uh, Sue Helton Morris also having surgery today to remove a brain tumor. So let's pray God's guidance for the surgeons and their teams today and that everything would go well uh, for them. Belinda's best friend has been sick. We've been praying for her uh, due to cough, sore throat, and congestion. And so many people right now are battling cold and flu symptoms, RSV and uh, COVID, many things going around right now, bronchitis. Uh, so let's just keep praying for each of these to, uh, to overcome and be restored back to full health. Robin uh, has an appointment coming up uh, in, the, in the next week or so uh, with her primary care to discuss options to hopefully avoid surgery. So let's keep praying for Robin. Also pray for continued recovery for Lucy, uh, recovering from trauma due to a motorcycle accident. We're also praying for those who have suffered stroke, Anthony Sifford, Wayne Owens, Buddy Randolph, Evangelist Billy Huey, Carmen's cousin Kelly, Johnny's nephew Joey, Sue Morris's nephew Dwayne, um, all with a stroke within the past year to year and a half. Uh, John Sutter, Paul Johnson, and Sandra Julius have had stroke recently. Pastor Chris Dew and Brother David Kent need our continued prayers in their recovery from major health setbacks. And let's pray for those who have had recent surgeries and need strength for recovery from those situations as well. Jimmy Warren, Cheryl LaChance, Brother Pulliam, Christian Carr, Titus Dornbach, Cindy and Lloyd Page, Tim Workman, Steve Cummins, Anthony and Michael Williams, Emily Stanley, Evie, Rose Brown, Becca, Cheney, J.R. Johnson, Kristen's neighbor Natalie, Lola Dickinson, Kristen's cousin Grady, Holly, and myself all need healing of diabetes. Jenny Perkins' dad, Robin Felver, Dole Mitchell, Holly, Amy Dees, Cheryl LaChance, Brother Mark Morris, Kelly B., Janie Parrott's nephew Blaine, Kenny Prenzel, Mike Sappington, Joyce Fisk, Sister Patty Arnold, David Duggar, Bud Taylor, Jimmy Warren, and Michelle Strain's mother all need healing of hearts. Uh, with Brantley and Elsie, uh, Brantley and Elsie both with uh, heart issues. These are children who have had heart problems since birth. Other children were praying for. Tano with spina bifida. Abel with PKU and autism. Abram with GNA01 disorder. Baby G with health issues. Uh, several health issues, in fact. Bailey May with hearing loss. Tammy Lawson's granddaughter with the epilepsy. Darla's granddaughter with seizures. Elliot with uh, symptoms of autism. And Stella, uh, who had a sudden illness that ended up with her on life support and possible need of a heart transplant. I haven't heard a recent update on her. If um, uh, Jamie Joe, if you're watching today and you have an update, please let us know uh, what's going on with Stella. Uh, those battling cancer, let's keep praying for each of them. Um, Kenny Burns, Julia Nelson, Pam, Jim Ramey, Maggie Lowry, Lynn Lawrence, Marsha's co-workers aunt, Linda Young, Rebecca Peterson, Cheryl, Amy Dees, Diane Escher, Dennis Phelps, Heather Milligan, Dwayne Lewis, Alice Elizabeth, Claire, Scott Lucia, Michelle Strain's sister Cindy, Marcia's friend's grandparent Valerie, Daniel Dickinson, uh, Kristen's friend Betty, Jamie Joe's grandfather Ari Bowers, uh, Gladys Sims, Christine, and Jordan. 
Uh, Darlin, Virginia continued their precautionary treatments after successful cancer removal surgery uh, earlier uh, last year. Let's keep praying for successful uh, chemo pill treatment for them. Jamie Jo's cousin Maisie has a brain tumor. Praying for healing for Maisie. Also for those uh, who suffer with illness, including Pastor Marty DeLott, uh, Brother Riley March, Sarah Stroop, uh, Carmen's sister Tracy Powers. Also praying for Tracy's uh, commute situation, that she would be able to sell her home and shorten her drive each day to and from work. Vivian, Johnny's mom, Melena's mom, Kristen's friend's dad, uh, need uh, a touch today as they suffer with dementia. Ben Ramey's stepdad, Tom, has had significant memory deterioration over the past uh, year or year and a half and needs uh, prayers for healing today. Pray for those who suffer with migraine headaches, uh, including Marsha, Marsha's co-worker son, Melena, and Beth. Uh, praying for Doug Seaball, who has stage 4 kidney failure. Also, Kristen's friend Dave and Oscar Smith suffer with kidney issues. Pray for Gary Lee, Robbie Northrup, Kendra Ortiz, um, Dee's mother Carolyn, and Nancy Collins, all with chronic lung issues. Carol, Regina, and Bob with shingles. Marsha's mother-in-law, uh, Vivian. Russ, Beulah, my dad. Kristen's friend Matt and Tim Workman, all with Parkinson's disease. Uh, Sherry is in need of a liver transplant. Uh, Pam's granddaughter, Savannah, Amber Kay, Heather Spence, Regina Marlin's granddaughter, Aubrey, Kristen's neighbor, Ad, uh, neighbor Natalie, Michael Parrott, and Eva's daughter, Sandra, all need healing of stomach issues. Uh, Jimmy Moore has arthritis pain in his wrist. Brother Virgil Pulliam suffers with arthritis pain, as do Rose Brown, June Coffer, and Sister Judy Williams' mom. Renee, Sammy, Sheila, Chris, and Donna have mobility issues. Uh, we're also praying for Eddie Potts, Venus, Lois Link, Regina, uh, Randy Reeves, Robbie, Marshall Link, Cheryl LaChance's uncle, Kristen's friend Laura, Robin Tibbs, Kristen's friend Ann, Meredith, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Cheryl Ogden, Jessica O'Hara, George Tibbs, Judy Williams' brother, Devin Huff and Michelle Clark, all with various needs of healing today. Uh, COVID outbreak in area nursing homes uh, is an issue right now. Uh, Carmen reports it's rampant among the residents of the facility that Russ is in, and he tested positive himself on Saturday. They're just treating symptomatically, uh, offering no additional uh, treatment for them. And uh, there's at least a couple of staff members also with COVID in that particular facility. So this is a case in many places. Johnny has reported an outbreak in the home that his mother's in uh, recently as well. Uh, we need to pray for all those that are in these long-term care facilities for their protection from uh, contagious diseases of different sorts, including COVID, and that they would receive the compassion and the competent care that they need uh, today. Pray for our military personnel and their families especially the families of the three soldiers recently killed in a drone attack in Jordan. Pray for protection for all of our service members and that their families would be strengthened during times of separation during deployments. Our North American and global missionaries, uh, we continue to pray for them, 11 families on status here in Missouri. Our Metro missionaries, the Richmonds and the West families in uh, Detroit and Washington, D.C., uh, we have a new family just approved for um, New York City, the Willis family, and they will be here in the Missouri District in the month of June. Uh, I happen to be the Metro Missions Coordinator for our district, and so I'm tasked with uh, scheduling their uh, services while they're here and giving them places to, uh, to minister and to hopefully raise their funds quickly, so pray that that would go well in scheduling them and filling up their calendar as well. We need to pray for the Tomyevs in Ukraine, in the capital city there, uh, constantly under attack, and they're ministering the gospel in those uh, terrible conditions. The Patterson family next door in Romania, they need prayers for uh, their um, nation, and due to their proximity to the war, they need prayers for uh, protection as well. Pray for persecuted believers 
in the Middle East and other access challenged areas. Uh, pray for peace in Israel, still believing for release of the rest of the hostages, uh, believing for an end to the war in Ukraine. We have many spiritual and family needs uh, today that we continue to pray for. Uh, praying for the Cummins family, the Marlins, the Clarks, the Moores, the Williams, the Pulliams, uh, the Biddick family. Um, praying for Stephen and Malena today as um, they are looking at a uh, possible house to rent in uh, the Puxico area. Uh, praying for Mark Perkins' sons, Matt and Mark and their families. Also, let's cover Mark and Jenny in our prayers throughout the week. Um, uh, Mark out on the truck, but took uh, Jenny with him as uh, she's going to be staying in Texas at, with her parents to help them for the next two to three weeks. So pray for God's protection for them on the roadways um, throughout the week. Judy Johnson's grandson, Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter, Jennifer and Brenda's family, J.R. Johnson, all needing our prayers. Uh, we're believing for revival in these families. Jeffrey needs reconciliation in his family and his wife needs healing. Shirley needs deliverance from suicidal thoughts. Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa needs mental, emotional, and spiritual healing. We're praying for Destiny to grow in her relationship with God. Annette and Dave, Marsha's friend Ashley, needing our prayers. Marsha's friend Linda needs healing and is battling depression. Terry Monk needs salvation. David and many other prodigals are needing to return to the Lord. Uh, pray for our young people, uh, many of them constantly feeling the pull of the world, and we're trying to keep them encouraged and uh, stable uh, to get them, just simply get them through high school um, and uh, into adulthood where they can um, hopefully make wise decisions going forward without so many distractions. Rose needs prayers for her family's salvation, uh, wants to see them serving the Lord. Let's pray for our Mingo RCF residents and the new class that's um, launching this weekend for them. Uh, pray for our leaders of that class, Scott and Jennifer Jones, as they will need much wisdom. I can testify to that as I have uh, been going there for um, well over a year and a half now. And um, actually, I guess it's been over two years now. I've been going out there on Thursdays ministering to the residents. And we want to pray God's blessing upon this new part of this ministry. Also, Mingo Job Corps Ministry, uh, starting a new class for them this Sunday. Pray for Ben and Star Ramey, who will be heading up that effort. Uh, these are recent graduates of our leadership challenge class that I teach at our local church. We're praying for a revival in all of our communities. And we're praying for those who are battling addiction to be set free. Jacob, Josh, Allen, Ashley, Dawson, Charles, Frank, William, and Dana all battling addiction. Stephanie and her children uh, have much pain and dysfunction in their family relationships. And we're praying for restoration there. Uh, Regina asked us to pray for her family and her, um, her family with lots of unspoken needs. Belinda Stratton has some unspoken needs. Rebecca Rush, Terry's youngest sister, Robin Kay, Venus's daughters, Judy Williams' family, Johnny's family, Tracy Powers, all with unspoken needs as well. And we're praying for peace and comfort for the Robbins family today as they recently lost a family member. So let's pray for them and that God would just comfort them and strengthen them today in their time of distress. Good morning to you, Carmen and Kristen, uh, mom and dad with us today, Johnny. Um, and yes, I missed that report. Uh, did, I somehow neglected to get that written down, but uh, recently there was a report on Arlo that he's doing great, and that report comes from Pat Wells. Good morning to you, Johnny, Belinda. Uh, she's asking to continue praying for her best friend who's been sick and for her furnace that's having some issues blowing cold air. So Belinda's had a lot of problems with um, her heat uh, situation, first with propane and now this uh, malfunction with her furnace. And we recently experienced the same thing at church uh, with uh, furnaces not working properly during the coldest time and, um, and then having to have one of them actually worked on uh, repaired afterwards. 
Uh, good morning, Pam. She's asking for prayers for her granddaughter, Sydney, having testing done next Monday at Children's Hospital for autoimmune disease. So let's remember that need. Terry, good morning to you. Judy, good to see you this morning. Thank God for each of you so faithful to pray with us. Uh, I want to direct your attention to Exodus chapter 31, verse uh, 2 through 5 this morning uh, as we continue talking about the significance of God-given uh, wisdom and how it enables us to do things for God that we uh, would would have formerly thought impossible. Um, when the Lord gave Moses the command for the wilderness tabernacle, he then gave him these instructions in Exodus chapter 31, verse 2. He said, See, I have called my name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, to work in every craft. Now, understand that these are people who have just come out of 400 years uh, or several hundred years of slavery and uh, in Egypt, and they were all tasked with simply making brick. That was, that was their uh, main job, was to make brick. And, but here they needed something else done that they did not have the skills for. And we do not see anywhere that um, this man, Bezalel, was just naturally gifted or had any training, but God specifically said, I have called him out and I have filled him with my spirit and given him the ability and intelligence and knowledge for craftsmanship to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, and in cutting stones for setting setting to work in every craft in carving wood simply put god anointed this man with wisdom for the purpose of creativity and craftsmanship to produce something for his glory and for the usefulness of his people and we need to begin to look at ourselves in this way that we can be used by god for things that we did not uh, formally uh, even dream of uh, with God-given ability uh, that we do not possess in ourselves. I can think of many things in my life that I have become involved in that going in I did not have the training or the even the natural ability to do. The job that I've done for 30 years, I did not have any education or training for that job uh, that deals with uh, being a medical language specialist. Uh, but God helped me uh, to quickly pick that up and to be hired into that job just based on an aptitude without any prior training. And that became my career for 30 years. Now, also to do with that, uh, in the past 10 years, a contract that I was awarded, there was one doctor that had his own private transcriptions for many years. And uh, they said, we're not going to put him on your contract because... Uh, he's just so difficult. No one has ever been able to type him successfully except this one person that's been with him for so many years. Well, later on, there was a turn of events and that transcription is left. And they said, we're going to have to put this on your account. And I had not minded at all not having that one doctor. There would just been an additional headache. So they'd already set the bar at an impossible level. And the first time that I heard his voice, I thought, this is impossible. He had just a very, very strong accent, English second language, uh, physician. And I, I literally there at my desk, I bowed my head and I said, Lord, I need you to anoint my mind so that I can successfully learn how to transcribe this physician. And you know what? The Lord did that. The Lord did that. And today, uh, I'm still in business right now because of that one uh, physician. He's an integral part of the work that I'm still doing uh, today. And uh, I think back to uh, playing the keyboard. You know, for some people, all that's very natural. For me, uh, it was very hard work for many, many years. Uh, but God anointed my mind. And we all have natural giftings. For me, singing was a natural gift from 
uh, a very young age, I could hear harmony parts, didn't have formal training for that, but so many other things. Um, preaching the gospel, I did not attend Bible college. I never learned how to put together a sermon, but God filled me with his spirit and wisdom and ability to do it. And I give him all the glory today that I've been in the ministry now for over 30 years, and God has helped me to be able to communicate to people without any formal training. And I say all that today not to brag on myself. I hope you understand I'm bragging on God today. God can give us wisdom and ability to do things that we never thought we could do. So don't sell yourself short and say, well, I can't step into that area. I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't have this ability. I'm not like so-and-so. No, God equips those who he calls. And if he can take someone who just came out of a slavery, who knew nothing except how to bake and carry bricks, um, then he can fill him with wisdom to work in all manner of craftsmanship, then what can he do with our lives today as we are spirit-filled and we can ask him for wisdom and knowledge to help us to do things for his glory. So let's be aggressive in what we are doing for God today. Ask God to show us something that he wants us to do and give us the boldness to step into it. I hope that that blesses you today. Um, and you can probably think of things that you're doing right now that without the help of God, you never could have been successful in. But God enabled you to do it. Let's give him the glory today. God, we give you the glory and the praise today for every good gift. We know it all comes from you. And there's no variable. It's a shadow of turning or respect of persons with you. And Lord, you want to just pour out your blessings and your giftings upon each one today. You want us to step into these things that you uh, want us to do. And you want to enable us as we, um, as we give you our faith and our trust today. So have your way in us, Lord. I pray that you would just do a new thing in each person today that's watching this video. And we pray, God, that you would just be glorified in and through our prayers. Lord, without any formal training, you can raise up those who from a burdened heart know how to intercede uh, on behalf of others, those who know how to share the word of God and communicate in, in Bible studies with people that no one else can connect with. We pray, God, that you would raise those up among us and, and give them that desire, Lord, to do your work. Hallelujah. Use us, Lord, today, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray today, God, for Terry, that she would recover quickly from the surgery uh, on her lungs we lift up Marcia's co-worker and Sue Morris, both having surgery today, praying, God, for the surgical teams, that everything would go well and that they would recover fully and quickly. We pray for Belinda's friend today who has been sick and for Belinda's need with her heat situation. We pray for Robin, who's dealing with uh, possible surgery and trying to avoid that. We pray for her doctor's appointment to go well. We pray for continued recovery for all these we've mentioned today. Those, Lord, who are battling diabetes and heart problems. These children we've mentioned today that are in such need. We pray, God, that you would reach down and minister to their health needs right now. Those that are battling cancer, we've called every name out today in your presence. And we know, God, that you care about them. You are the miracle-working God. And we just believe right now, God, that as we pray in your name, Hallelujah, that you are doing the work. We believe for Darlin and Virginia, for Maisie, Lord, dealing with their health situations, those who are struggling against illness, and Tracy with uh, her situation with illness and her long daily commute. We, we're praying, God, for this to be shortened for her, Lord, that she would be able to have less stress on her health. We pray for those with dementia and migraines and kidney problems, those with chronic lung issues, those with emphysema and COPD, those battling seasonal illnesses that are affecting their respiratory systems right now with bronchitis and COVID, RSV. Lord, reach down and touch them today. Those who are dealing with flu symptoms right now, we speak healing. For those with Parkinson's disease and liver issues and stomach problems, those who have back pain this morning and and those with arthritis and mobility issues, we believe for their healing today. We pray, God, for 
those who have other types of health needs that we don't know all the details of. We pray, God, you would reach down and minister healing to each one of them today. Those who are in nursing homes that have COVID outbreaks, we pray your protection for each resident. We pray, God, that they would recover quickly in Jesus' name. We pray for the staff members who have tested positive. And, Lord, you see how this uh, uh, makes a additional strain on these facilities uh, when they are short-staffed. We pray, God, Lord, for each of these um, nursing homes today, for Memory Lane and for uh, Aspire Nursing in Advance and for our local nursing home here and others that are affected. We pray, God, you would reach down and just minister right now. Hallelujah. We pray for our military, uh, our service members and their families. Lord, these three soldiers who we lost in the drone attack in Jordan, we pray for their families, that you would comfort them, strengthen them today. We pray, God, for wisdom for our leaders. Let there be a turn, God, that takes place in our nation, Lord, that would uh, put us in the right direction. We pray for protection for all of our service members and their families right now. In Jesus' name, we lift up our uh, North American missionary, missionaries who are uh, serving on behalf of your kingdom today. They're on the front lines in spiritual warfare. We pray your protection for them, not only for the pastors of these new works, but their children, their families who are under attack from the enemy. We believe, God, for those homes to be strengthened today and for the revival to break forth in those communities. We believe, God, for Brother and Sister Willis as they are preparing to go on status in New York. We pray, God, that you would bless their deputational travels throughout this year, the Richmonds and the West families. We pray, God, you would bless their efforts in Detroit Metro and in Washington, D.C. We pray for the Heishen family ministering to our military families in Germany. We pray, God, your protection for our missionaries in Ukraine and Romania, for persecuted believers in the Middle East and other access challenge nations. We pray for peace in Israel. We pray for the war in Ukraine to end. We pray, Lord, for the situation with Taiwan, the tensions there between Taiwan and, and China to be eased. We pray, God, for those who have needs in their families today. Lord, you've heard these names that we've called out, those who are suffering mentally, those who are battling depression and suicidal thoughts, those who are dealing with the effects of bipolar disorder. Lord, you're able to heal the mind today is the same as the body, for you are the creator of it all. We pray, God, for uh, prodigals to return home. We pray, Lord, for those who are weak in their faith to be strengthened. We pray for young people who are being pulled by the world and from, from ungodly influences. Lord, we rebuke those influences today. And we pray for deliverance, Lord, for our young people. In the name of Jesus, we pray your will would be done, God, in new endeavors things that we're preparing to step into. We pray, God, that you would give us favor and give us wisdom in how to proceed. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for our Mingo RCF ministry and Job Corps ministry, Lord, that you would bless the leaders of those ministries. God, help them to grow stronger as they are helping others to grow in you. We pray for deliverance for those who are battling addictions, Lord. We pray for our team that's ministering through Celebrate Recovery, God, that you would use them Lord, to help people to find deliverance through you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray, God, for those who have unspoken needs today. Lord, move in these situations for Virginia and, and Belinda, Rebecca and Robin, Venus's daughters, Judy's family, Johnny's family, Tracy uh, today. God, move in these unspoken requests. We pray peace and comfort for the Robins family today. For all these other needs, Lord, that have been brought to our attention today. God, we know that you're moving in these needs right now. Hallelujah. We give you the glory and the praise for what you're doing, and we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this progress for Cindy. We give you praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, prayer team. <clears throat> Excuse me. God bless you. Thank you for praying with me. Uh, looking forward to midweek service tonight uh, with Brother Pulliam teaching. And looking forward to what God has in store for us uh, this weekend. Um, so, so many good things happening. And I encourage you to be a part of what God is doing in your city, wherever you're at today. Be a part of what God is doing. 
I'll see you tomorrow morning right here on Facebook Live at 7.30. I hope that you'll be able to join with us once again.